chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 11. Today we don't have much time because of the exhibition. We want to make the service very short. So that those of you who couldn't partake on Friday and yesterday can spend the whole day and then just enjoy yourselves at the exhibition. Revelation 12, verse 7 to 11. Now, throughout the week, we have been talking about overcome by the blood of the Lamb. One of the services, as I stood on the platform and I was ministering, the Holy Spirit began asking me questions. I, I wrote the, all the three questions down. Number one, the first question was, what did the blood do in heaven? That was the first question. The second question was that, what did the blood do in Egypt? And the third question is that, what did the blood do on Calvary? Three questions. And so throughout the week, I've been trying to find out answers in my spirit. So, I just want to give you a snapshot of what the Holy Spirit shared with me during the week. Can we read from the King James? Can we get the King James? And there was, I love, the King, I love how the King James began the verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Somebody say, and there was war in heaven. Look at your friend and say that there was war in heaven. So the hell you are going through, tell somebody, the hell you are going through, heaven has been there before. Shout a big amen. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. Verse 8. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. Let's read verse 10 together, if you, are, if you don't mind. We want to. Of course, you cannot read without sitting. You, you, can't read, you can't read whilst you are sitting. Let's give honor to the word. One, two. I love this scripture. Read it again. Let's read it again. This time, try to uh, try to elogize. Let your voice come up a little, uh, because this what we are reading is is not. This one was not said by men. Uh, it was said by angels, archangels, the four living creatures, the twenty-four elders. Uh, the Bible said that their voice is like a tender. So read like a tender. One, two, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Lift your hand and shout a big amen. And say, may every accuser on this day, may they be cast down. You can take your seat. Verse 11. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Somebody said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony, 
and they love not their lives unto the dead. That was the, that was the first scripture. So this scripture tells us what the blood did in heaven. So it answers the first question, what the blood did in heaven. You see, I realize that there is something mysterious about the blood. I realize that there is something too mysterious. And I, I believe that the, 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 the effects and the understanding of the blood, we have not gotten it to the fullest. I mean, to the fullest. Because I see that there is something special about the blood. But I pray that God will bring us to the place of understanding. That we, will, we shall understand what the blood stands for and what the blood did and what the blood is doing and what the blood is going to do. Hallelujah. So this scripture brings out, I wouldn't want to spend much time, but it tells us what the blood did. Number one, they overcame the dragon by the blood. So when you are going through life challenges, you can only overcome by the blood. So on this Lord's Supper Day, may you overcome by the blood. And you see, you can overcome by two things, the blood and the word of you. You see, testimony is a word. So they overcame by the word of their testimony. So if you don't have a testimony today, may God give you a testimony. Because you can only overcome by two things. Number one, by the blood. And number two, by the word of your testimony. May God give you a word. Come on, lift your hand and shout a big amen. Exodus chapter 12. It's amazing. All of them are chapter 12, chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 7. I know that by now, most of you, some of you are becoming students of Exodus chapter 12. Because I love it. And I've been making references there. Last September, we taught profusely on Exodus 12. Exodus 12, 7. 12 to 14. We read verse 7 and we jump to 12. 14. Then the last scripture, we shall jump from Exodus 12, 20 to 24. And then we'll enter into a time of prayer. Now, Exodus 12, 7 is saying that, And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smit all the Egyptians and will smit all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smit the land of Egypt. Lift up your hand and say, The blood. Shout, The blood is my token. I said, Lift your hand and say, The blood. Lift your hand and say, The blood. Lift your hand and say, The blood is my token. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Somebody say memorial. Because it's a memorial, that is why today we are in this service. This is a Passover service. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it as a feast to the law throughout your generations. You shall keep it by, you shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. You see, an ordinance is a law. It's a law. So the Lord's Supper has become an ordinance. The last scripture, Exodus chapter 12, verse 22, 24. Exodus chapter 12. This is the last scripture. Yeah, so the, the second scripture also answers what the blood did in Egypt. What the blood did in Egypt. Number one, it was a token. Number two, the blood covered the sins of the people. So if anyone, all what you need to do is just to, to strike it, strike the blood on your lintel and on your doorpost. Just strike it. They took, the Bible said that they took a high sop. We'll see it very soon from this verse. They took a high sop. Now, high sop is a common tree. Common. It was all over the place. 
So when you came, come out of your house, you can just find a high soap branch, plug it, dip it in the basin, take the blood, and just apply. Oh, that was all that they needed to do. So if you have not taken your blood, in this meeting, may God give you a high soap. You didn't understand the high soap, so you couldn't shout a good amen. I said, may God place a high soap in the palm of your hands. So in this service, you shall dip it in the basin containing the blood. And take the blood. And I apply the blood. Hallelujah. So, it also it tells us what the blood did in the land of Egypt. The blood decided, it brought about a separation. Those who were going to stay in Egypt and those who were going to leave Egypt. So what the blood did was to bring a separation and a distinction. It made a difference. So in this calamity that we are in, in this trouble so that we are in as a nation and as a country, it is only the blood that can separate you from the rest of the world. May the blood bring you separation. I said today, may the blood bring you separation. It's only the blood. So that was what the blood did in the land of Egypt. Verse 20 says, Exodus chapter 12, verse 20 to 24. Verse 20 to 24. I want us to take particular note of this verse. Can we read while seated? Can we read this verse? Shall we read it? One, two. Let's read it again. Let's read it for the last time. Ye shall eat nothing living. In all your habitations, ye shall eat unleavened bread. Lift your hand and say unleavened bread. Say unleavened bread. Now, unleavened bread is bread without yeast. And yeast is an emblem of corruption, an emblem of sin, an emblem of that which puffs. You see, a, an yeast, a small yeast can make a little flour become too big. But once you put it in the hands of Dompe, the bread in the hands of Dompe, and Dompe does it like this. You see that the bread, the bread will shrink and all the puffiness, the pomposity, and all the pride will disappear. All what you need to do is to place that bread in the hands of Dompe. So, Jesus talks about prideness. If you don't take anything home in this service, take Exodus 12 verse 20 home. Because when God was giving the regulations for the Passover, for the Lost Supper, when he was giving the regulations for the separation, when he was giving the, the, the regulations for their deliverance and their salvation, what was very particular to God was to make sure that in the house you are in, there was nothing living. Because while there is a living stuff there, it's going to corrupt the Passover. Because a living life is a sinful life. A living life is a life of pomposity and a life of prideness. So God was particular and said, in all your habitations, make sure that you eat nothing living. Give us the verse 20 again. Let's look at it. In all your habitations. In all your habitations. Shall ye eat unleavened bread? Now, an unleavened bread is bread without sin. Bread without corruption. So, as we are coming to dine with the Lord, if there is anything that easily besets you, lay it on the cross. I didn't hear amen. I said I didn't hear amen. If you are engaged in any stuff that can prevent the Passover over your life, today is an opportunity for you. Just let it go. All that you need to do is let it go. And then you take your branch of high soap, dip it in the basin, collect your blood, and apply the blood. Verse 21. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamp according to your families and kill the Passover. You see, God gave Moses instruction, and Moses was relaying the instruction to the, to the leaders of Israel. And look at how he framed it. He said, kill the Passover. Say, kill the Passover. 
The lamb is the Passover lamb. And ye shall take a branch of high soap and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians. And when he seared the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So in this scripture, you see two things. You see that the Lord and the destroyer. So when God was passing through, the destroyer was also passing through. But God is not a destroyer, but he's the creator of the destroyer. So as he was walking, passing through the land of Egypt, the destroyer was also taking a walk with God on the corridors of Egypt. But when they get to a house that has the blood as a token, then God said, never, never again. Don't stretch forth your destructive hands. Pass over. Then the destroyer will pass over. So anytime we come to the Passover table, death is passing over our lives. Every destroyer is going to pass over you. Lift your hand and shout a big amen. The last verse 24 says, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And ye shall observe this thing. What thing? The Passover. What thing? The Passover staff. You shall observe it for an ordinance. So God is making it a law. To thee and to thy sons forever. May God bless the reading of his word. Now, we know from the story of Calvary that the blood did wonderful work on the cross of Calvary. As a New Testament believer, you are familiar with the intricacies of the cross and the crucifixion of the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world on the cross of Calvary. And so, you know very well that God's requirement for the salvation of mankind is the blood of the Lamb. That was the standard. That was God's requirement. So in heaven, the requirement that the Michael and the angels needed to defeat the devil was the blood. So after fighting and not prevailing, they just went and took the blood. And when the enemy saw the blood, the enemy had to disappear. The Bible said that their place was no longer found in heaven. So the blood brought about a perpetual excommunication of the enemy hallelujah and then in egypt we saw that god's requirement for the deliverance of the israelites was the blood but this time it was a lamp that they have railed themselves three-year lamp a suckling lamp they took it and they sacrificed it now i i want to start a ministration i call the blood as a token the blood as a token yeah, but because we don't have much time, I'll just give you the introduction and then I'll continue probably in the next last supper, the last one, if only time will permit us. The blood as a token. What God told Moses was that the blood shall be unto you for a token so that when I see the blood, I shall pass over. Lift your hand and say the blood is a token. The blood is my token. The blood is the requirement. Hallelujah. Yeah, I think you can, you can, you can take some small seat. And then, uh, let's put our hands together for royal verses. They love it. They want to continue praying. But a token is a sign that depict that a price has been paid. A token is a sign which shows that a price has been paid. Now, I looked at the Webster's Revised Average Dictionary, and it says that 
say something striking there. And I think I, I love what he's saying. He says that a token is something that is given as a symbol. A token is something that is given as a symbol or a guarantee of authority. And it is a sign of authenticity and a sign of a good faith. A token is something that has something that has been given as a symbol or a guarantee of authority or a sign of authenticity hallelujah it also says that a token is a memorial of friendship a memorial of friendship and is something that is something by which the friendship of another person we can we we'll share the notes on our platforms something by which the friendship of another person is to be kept in mind so once i show the token then what i am showing that i have been approved is a sign of authenticity i am saying that i have an authority from the person who gave me the token hallelujah so it's a memory of a relationship and a friendship a typical example is the rainbow uh, in, in, in Genesis chapter 8 when God destroyed the universe with the great the flood of Noah the Bible says that God said I will not destroy mankind again with the flood and the sign was a rainbow so the rainbow became a token for Noah. So even though Noah is dead and gone, but so long as rainbow comes, God remembers the token, which was the rainbow that he gave to Noah. Hallelujah. Oh, talk to me. I said hallelujah. So a token shows that something has been purchased at a price. So it means that the requirement has been met. You see, when you are traveling to the U.S. or to the U.K., you go and buy a ticket, a plane ticket. You cannot board a, pl a flight with your money. When you take your money, $2,000, and get it, they will say, go away. They don't need the money. They need the, the ticket, which is the token. So when I went to the traveling agent, and then I buy a ticket to the UK or the US, the money is taken, and then I've been given a small cheat, and the cheat is a ticket. The ticket has become a token that I have been booked on Emirates Airline. I have been booked on Brussels Airline. So anytime, at that particular point in time, when I get to the airport, I have access to the flight. So the ticket becomes my token. Now, when I misplace the token, I have to find means to recover it. And I believe, I don't know much about it, but I think that when you misplace your flight ticket, this is even your ticket. So your tickets cannot be misplaced. It's in high clouds. So you just get there, you mention your name, they just check it, and then in you go. Hallelujah. So what I want to say is that a token is a, something that gives you access. It's a sign of authenticity. So when God said in Exodus chapter 12 that the blood will be for you a token, what it meant was that God is saying that the blood is going to be a sign of authenticity that the requirement has been met. God is saying that the blood is going to be a memorial of the friendship that I have with whoever is in that house. So the destroyer, when you get there, I have paid for them. I have paid for death. So just pass over them. Don't go in there. Because whoever is in that house, I have secured their life. I have, I have a, a, a lasting friendship with them. Can I get somebody to shout a big amen? amen? Get another person to shout a good amen. amen. Lift your hand and say, the blood, the blood. is a token. A token. The blood, the blood. is a token. a token. Let's rise to our feet. Let's rise. If I don't take my time, I will go much. I will go deeper. I will keep going and keep going and keep going. But you see, God instructed them now, Moses said, 
in verse 22 of Exodus 12. Let's read it, verse 22 of Exodus chapter 12, verse 22. Now, the high sop is an emblem of faith. The high sop is an emblem, it represents faith. The faith of the believer. Now, I want us to read this scripture together. One, two. A bunch of high soap in the basin and strike the lintel. Look at your friend and say, once you apply the blood, don't go out. Once you apply the blood, stay in the house. Stay in the church. Don't go out. There are some of you who are going out. The problem we have is that some of you are going out. But once you apply the blood, don't go out. Because there is danger out there. Death is taking a walk. So don't go out. Stay in the house. Stay in the church. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. So stop saying that today I don't feel like going to church. Today I am tired. I don't feel like it is when you are tired that you have to come to church. You don't come to church when you are strong. Hallelujah. That's just by the way. But you see, the, 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 Moses said, take a bunch of high soap, dip it in the blood. That is in the basin. Now, the high soap is your faith. Because the high soap was very common to find. Here you can see some in Africa. But in, in Israel, it was so common. In Egypt, it was so common. It was everywhere. So once you come out of your house, you see a high soap. Plug it. In fact, it grows through a wall. It grows through walls. So they just pick it, collect it, and they just apply now, so when the high soap is talking about your faith, it means that don't say I don't have faith. Because high soap was very easy to find. So faith should be simple for you to acquire. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Faith is, I believe, when today Professor Labi said, tell you that I'm going to employ you. Monday, come. Tomorrow, come with your CV to my university. You are very confident that our ah, prof, he has said it, he will do it. You have faith, you are believing, you believe what prof has said. But he's a human being. Now, that is how you should approach God. So, when God says this, believe that that is what God has said. All what you need to do is that stay in the house. The reason why you doubt is because you are outside the house. Because once you go outside the house, the destroyer can catch you. And the destroyer can destroy you. I pray today that the blood will set you apart. That as we come and die with the Lord, may the blood set you apart. May the blood set you apart. And as we apply the blood, apply it over your life. Apply it over your business. Some of this thing we say it and people think that it doesn't work. But you can apply the blood by faith. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Because the high soap today is our faith. So as I am dipping my hands in the blood, as I am applying the blood, it's going to work. When the enemy sees it, the enemy is going to run away. Do you know that when a righteous person takes a walk, when a righteous person takes a walk at a particular place, it will take so many years before it, witches can pass there. Just your walk. May that be your portion. I said, may that be your portion. May that be your portion. This is the last, ironic, I think this is the last one for 2022. Because 2020 is going to be in January. So even though this is the last but one for 2022, according to our church's calendar, but this appears to be the, the theoretical Lord's Supper we're going to have for 2022. Hallelujah. I pray that this table is going to change your life forever. Just as it separated the children of God in the light in the land of Egypt from the children of darkness, may this table bring a separation. As you apply the blood over your life, may every sickness be healed. 
May every disease be healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May the blood heal every cancer here. May the blood heal every arthritis here. May the blood heal every brain conditions here. May the blood heal every intestine conditions. In the name of Jesus. May the blood bring healing. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Lift your hands. Lift your hands and begin to pray. Makai yabo handi brahonda. Kadiba haya gabadu zabahanda. It is the blood. Makadeba. We are not going to slay the lamb because the lamb has been slain already. Akabradori and Dabadesaba. It overcame in heaven. It overcame in Egypt. It overcame on the cross of Calvary. It's going to overcome in our days, in our time. The blood is going to overcome. Wherever the blood went, it overcame. We declare today, O oh God of our lives, Lake Abrando, as we take the blood, let make us overcome us. Make us overcome us. Make us overcome us. Make us overcome us. Give us a testimony. Give us a testimony. Give us a testimony. Pray. Make us overcome us. Make us overcome us. Daya da bradari anda laba. Ila da bradari anda laba daya. Ika da bradari anda laba daya. Ika ba da ba da 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 bas. Inta ba de brada. Let the talking make the difference. Let it make the difference. Let it make the difference. Da da bradari anda ba da laba da bas. Eh, mazaka ya da brada. In the lele 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 bas. In the lele 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 bas. Raba de lele 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 haya. In the lele lele not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, say the Lord, la kapata ya dabadas, anta lebele kedebres, akadu zabahanda, akadu zabahaya, akadu zabahaya, riabada bradari anda labada, rabradari anda dabado sada, akadu rianda badeka, rabada brado mande, rabade mande lebrede, kita bado mazika da, raika deri anda la, debla 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 debla, make a difference, set me apart, let the blood set me apart. Let the blood set me apart. Kado saba, rakapata kadaba, rakata. Let the blood set me apart. Let the blood set me apart. Let the blood set me apart. Let the blood forgive every sin. Let the blood forgive every iniquity. We are in the house. Makabadari anda ba, rabada gabradari anda. Libada bada daba ha. Pray, 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 pray. Pray for two minutes. Pray for two minutes. Kala gabradari anda la bada. Yes, Lord, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. It's a token. I have a, a memory, I have a friendship with God. I have a sign of authenticity. Makado Bosik de Hell. Laka de la Badu Gabahaya. Rada Libra Dorianda. Hey, Rada la Bahaya. Hey, Rada la Bahaya. Hey, Rada la Bahaya. 
Hey, Radala Bahaya. Hey, Radala Bahaya. Hey, Radala Bahaya. Kaya Dabade. Rabanda Dabades. Ila Dabades. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior. Precious Redeemer and Friend. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that a land could rescue the souls of men? Rescue the souls of men. Oh, Wonderful, merciful. All over the building, sing it, sing it. Wonderful, merciful, Savior. Precious Redeemer. Precious Redeemer. It's a simple song. Who would have thought of God and Lamb? we praise you are the one that we adore the one we adore hey Matagama no you give the grace you give the healing and praise you are the one you are Sing it again. This is it. Lift your two hands. Lift your two hands. That's his name. You are, you are the one. I thought we praise his name. I thought his holy name. Give him glory. All over the building. Lift your two hands up. Lift your two hands up. You give, you Oh, 
22, Jesus said, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Luke 22, verse 7. Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Then in verse 14, verse 15, Verse 14, he said, and that when the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Verse 19, and he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. It was the Passover, now it is his body. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. We shall ask Professor Labi, Reverend Professor Labi, to pray and consecrate the table, the bread, and the wine. Your people.